Hello. In the last three episodes I have led you through a whole range of quite necessary repair jobs. In those videos I repaired a dishwasher, a lawnmower, a car, a vacuum cleaner and a garage door. I also built a mobile workbench, a desk and a bed and talked about other minor projects and you can find the links to those episodes in the video description. So many pressing issues have been resolved and since the holiday season is only a couple of days away I figured that repairing some toys and other Christmas related things would be a good idea. And I'd say let's start with a classic. This box was given to me by a guy from the neighboring village just yesterday and frankly I don't even know exactly what's inside. So let's just take a look shall we. Here we have the box of a tank wagon made by the Faller Corporation in Germany. It is labeled E-Train and I'd say it's a mid 1980s vintage. Here we have a passenger wagon labeled Play Train and on the box it says made in West Germany, which would mean that it was most probably made before 1990. Here we have a red tank labeled Oil Station, a gray plastic piece carrying lots of smaller parts. And here is our actual tank wagon, a bit dirty, but otherwise it seems intact. And here we have the model of a small steam locomotive labeled PT-77. And alongside a bunch of smaller plastic parts we find a larger number of brass tracks mounted on brown plastic ties. And we also find some documentation that tells us that all this stuff is part of a railroad system called E-Train or Play Train by the German company Faller. That is actually better known for making model houses and other accessories that go along with actual model trains manufactured by companies like Merklin. What we have here is an E-Train system because the tracks are made of brass, while the Play Train system used plastic tracks and battery powered locomotives. This system also requires a DC power supply that unfortunately is nowhere to be found. But in a place like this that is of course not a problem at all. But before I will start to assess the damage and try to bring this train back to life everything will first have to be cleaned. And after blowing the dust off of all the parts with pressured air down in the basement I sort out the parts lying on this grey base plate that will be immersed in soapy water. These two remaining parts are actually not part of the train system as any German will understand. I'm pretty sure that this little figurine came out of this Kinderüberraschung is a popular chocolate snack made by the Italian company Ferrero and it has been very popular in Germany for a long time. It's basically an egg shaped chocolate shell that contains a surprise in form of a toy and that's what the name means, children's surprise. In some of the eggs you will find little figurines like this one. This little blue cap probably came from a version of the popular game Mensch ärgere dich nicht. The German word Mensch is different from what many of you in the US might know it for. For example the Merriam-Webster dictionary defines Mensch as quote a person of integrity or honor. The notorious Urban Dictionary goes even further when stating that a Mensch is a someone to admire and emulate. Someone of noble character. The key to being a real Mensch is nothing less than character, rectitude, dignity, a sense of what is right, responsibility and so on. But as you can see here what you know is actually the Yiddish but not the German meaning of that word. In German it just means human being and we use it in many positive and negative ways much like the word dude is used in the United States. Mensch ärgere dich nicht simply means something like dude don't get annoyed about this, for example when being sent back to the beginning of the game, which often happens. So with all the parts put aside I remove this switch from the board and immerse it in soapy water and many other non-electrical parts are put inside there as well. And I start to clean the steam locomotive with a little bit of detergent and a toothbrush. The wagons receive the same treatment and after a while I brush off the dirt from the other parts as well. And after everything is placed on this radiator here I wait for a few hours until it is all dried. Now we can start with some actual repairs and let me borrow the phrase don't turn it on take it apart and for that you simply have to push in a single piece of plastic and inside we see what would be used as a battery compartment in the battery powered version of this locomotive that must have existed as well. 
In here a heavy zinc die cast cylinder fills that space. Without the additional weight the locomotive probably couldn't pull enough wagons. And after removing a single screw and pushing in some plastic hooks we are inside the gearbox. And what we see here is a DC motor that drives two warm gears that are coupled together with a drive shaft. The shaft is not sitting in place anymore and that is because the plastic cogwheel of the front warm gear is severely damaged. It is not only not working, it is also blocked, hindering the locomotive from working at all. And since I have no replacement parts for this, I will simply remove the front gear altogether. The engine will have to make do with only the rear drive. But before we put it all together again, I apply some lubricant to the rear gear. And after reassembling the gearbox, it is time to test if it's working. According to the manual, the locomotive can be powered with up to 12 volts DC and I apply 6 volts DC to the wheels using a lab power supply. And it runs well. And now let's check if the locomotive can actually drive. The next thing that I will take care of is this broken skip wagon. Here we can see that two little plastic pins have broken off. Also one of the axles wouldn't hold anymore. On the working axle we see two small plastic bushings that hold the axle in place. These are missing on the loose one. So let's fix these issues. The remaining pins on the other side measure 3 mm in diameter and that's why I drill two 2.5 mm holes where the old pins had been. And I heat up two short M3 screws and screw them through the hole. And with both screws in place the mechanism is back in operation. In order to replace the missing plastic parts I will reuse two tiny brass bushings that I had salvaged some time ago. Since the bushings outer diameter is a little bit too big I file off a little bit of material before finally installing them. I know it doesn't look like new but it works. And with that done the skipping mechanism snaps back in place and the wagon is operational again. The next thing that we will take a look at is this stuff right here. And as it turns out it's all part of a tanking station that once could be used to pump oil colored water from a stationary tank into the tank wagon and back from the wagon into the stationary tank. As a third function the small electric pump could also suck up spilled oil from the ground nearby. And there are also some operating instructions of how to open and shut these five valves for the different modes of operation. A little bit excessive for a child's toy but very German for sure. Sadly enough a few parts are missing like the support for the red tank, the lid of the tank and a part by which a hose could be fastened to the ground as well as one of the hoses. Nevertheless I assembled what I have and improvised a test setup and opened and closed the valves in the correct manner. I hooked up the electric pump to the isolation transformer, filled water into the tank and simply tried to pump water into the small transparent basin on the left hand side. According to the enclosure the pump works with 9 to 18 volts AC but I couldn't get it running. It makes a humming noise but doesn't pump. But it actually doesn't matter. I'm happy if that train could simply drive around a small Christmas tree. So I set up a small circle of tracks and tested the locomotive. Due to the lack of the original power supply, the lab power supply is used once more here. And it pulls two wagons without problems. And after adding some more weight to the engine, even four wagons are not a problem. And our next patient is this beat up RC excavator of Chinese origins that a friend has given to me recently to check if it can be fixed. Both its tracks have ruptured, freezing the machine in place. Some parts of the fake hydraulic system are dangling around uselessly. But before we take care of that some cleaning must be done. If things are clean everything else becomes a little easier. But it actually turns out that the excavator isn't even all that dirty. Some fake dirt has apparently been applied to the plastic to make it look more realistic. While the tracks are still being cleaned 
Let us take a look at the remote control. The old 9 volt block battery only measures 1.5 volts and falling. I remove the old disposable battery and insert a fully charged new one. And the first good sign, the LED in front lights up. And in order to test the excavator I turn it on its side and connect an adapter to its connector on the bottom. The connectors do not fit perfectly and the color coding of the wires is reversed. I have to keep that in mind. Because I have no fitting battery pack, the excavator is hooked up to the lab power supply, which I set to the nominal operating voltage of the toy. So let's see if it still works. The excavator can still turn left and right, and the two sections of the arm can still be moved up and down. The left and right drives are also working, though without effect since no tracks are installed. With the tracks halfway cleaned and dried, I applied this elastic adhesive, which is based on a so-called MS polymer to the tracks and glued them back together. After the polymer had about two days of time to dry, I test the connection. It is unexpectedly strong. It is indeed so strong that nothing loosens, even though I pull on both ends as hard as I can. This is remarkable. But before using the tracks again, I cut off some excess glue with a knife. So I pull the tracks back on. And I remove the broken hydraulics parts. Maybe I will replace the cylinder with something else later. But in order to test the RC excavator I need a battery. For that I temporarily attach a 9V block battery inside the battery compartment. Not the right battery for the job, but it's just for a test anyway. So let's see how it works. Okay guys, I see it's all a bit shaky, but this is just an old cheapo after all. I count this as a win. But there is another small thing that I still want to show you today. What you see here is a Chinese knockoff of a traditional German Christmas pyramid. And I sorta hacked this a while ago and want to show you what I did. You normally fasten a bunch of candles down in the golden holders. Warm gases then stream up from the candles to set the fan in motion. It in turn moves some platforms that carry Christmas related figurines like the three kings, a couple of shepherds and similar things. Now since I wanted to eliminate the fire hazard that the candles present, I installed some LEDs down in the candle holders and replaced one candle with a PC fan that would then sit in the back where you don't see it. Together with a bunch of current limiting resistors I soldered it all quickly together. And tada, it works just well. So guys, no matter if you like Christmas or not, I hope you still enjoyed this silly little episode. And I wish you all happy holidays.